Hey guys, welcome back to Simon Says DIY. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a solid wood butcher block countertop like we have here on our vanity. Now I built this out of regular 2x8 boards that you can get from any hardware store or lumber store. This is pretty easy to make so I'll show you guys how to cut up the wood, splice it together, glue it and everything. So stick around and see what I've got planned. Now before I get started, don't forget to hit that like button down below if you like this video. Also, you can leave any comments or suggestions down below in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post a new video each week, so if you want to keep up with those, hit that subscribe button and help me out. Now before I can start gluing and assembling the countertop, I'm going to cut all of the 2x8s to about the right length. I'm gonna leave extra four inches, that way I can trim off the ends, make sure everything is square and lined up, but that will get me a lot closer to the length I need. That way I'm not gluing up extra feet of board length on all those joints and having to cut joints into all of those. So this will save me some time later on. So now that those are cut down, to the right length. If you look at these 2x4s, 2x6s, 2x8s, they're already pre-planed and the edges are rounded over. So I need to take that rounded edge off. I'm going to send it through my table saw on both sides of that 2x8 and then it is ready to start the next step. Now that I have all the boards trimmed down, I'm gonna line them up to make sure that they look good together and get them in just the right order that I want. Now once they're in the right order, I'm gonna mark lines in these boards so that I can line up all the biscuits and cut the holes just right for those. So I'm gonna take a ruler and just run down all of those boards connecting all of them. That will tell me where to cut the biscuit into these boards. Now using a biscuit cutter is a great way to make it solid, strong joint and it lines everything up and keeps it straight. Now this cuts a round notch into the wood allowing a biscuit that's just the right size to fit into those joints. And that ties the two edges together and keeps them in line as you clamp and it even adds a lot of strength with the glue inside. So you can see I'm inserting these wood biscuits in here. You can buy a pack of these from the store, really easy to get a hold of, and put some glue in the hole as well as all the way along the joint. Hammer in the biscuit and then just do the same thing on the other joint and put it together. So this works really well, lines everything up. Probably one of my favorite ways to make a solid joint. So once I have all those together, all the glue has been applied. I'm gonna clamp this down and let it sit overnight and come back tomorrow and check it out and see how it dries. Now the joints have cured overnight. The glue has completely hardened at this point. And now I can take it apart and start cleaning up this slab and I'll finish this off. Now the thing is, I wish I could send this through my planer, but it's just a little too wide to fit through. So I'm actually gonna set up a jig for my router to make a plane. So this takes a little bit longer, but it works really well. And if you have something like a live edge slab out, you can really easily level this out and plane it down by using a jig like this. It takes some time and a little bit of work, but it works really well.
Now the planing is just about finished on the top of the slab and I'm really only focusing on the top. The bottom is smooth enough for what it needs. You really won't see that underside at all. So I'm not focusing on planing that underside, just the top for now. And now that that is smooth and all planed down, I'm gonna take a belt sander with some pretty aggressive sandpaper on that to start. And you wanna just make sure you keep this moving constantly. You don't wanna stop or else it will add a gouge into the wood. Now, once I have the initial sanding down, I'm gonna switch to my orbital sander with a little bit more fine sandpaper and smooth that out even more. Now that the sanding's done and the planing is done, I can move towards the trimming stage. So I left a little bit extra on both sides of the slab as well as the ends. So I'm gonna trim that down really quick to be just the size I need. And then I can trim off the ends, squaring it all up. Now I'm gonna make the cutouts for the sink. Our sinks are gonna be mounted underneath the countertop, so we need to cut out the hole for the sink to fit into. And because it's on the underside, it needs to be exactly perfect, or else you'll see it every time you go to wash your hands. It needs to be just the right size and no gouges in the wood. So what I'm gonna do is I found a drill bit, the exact size of the cutout I need to make for the corners. I'll drill out the four corners first, and then I'll come back and cut out the straight line from corner to corner with my circular saw. Now, if your countertop doesn't need a sink, you can move right on to the next step. Instead of cutting out this hole, don't worry about it. The slab is ready to go after trimming it down and sanding it to move on to the next step. Now I'm gonna take my straight edge real quick and connect those lines so I know exactly where I need to cut and that will give me a clear line for my circular saw. Now I'm gonna drop it in on one side. You wanna make sure you don't cut past those holes you drilled out for the corners and I'll get pretty close. It's not gonna cut all the way through because the blade is round. It'll leave a sliver underneath that you cannot cut yet. Now I'm gonna take a hand saw and this works perfectly to fit into the cut that I've already made. And I can just trim off the corners so the circular saw could not reach. This way I keep from making gouges or really ugly marks in the wood that I don't want. Now I have both of the holes cut out for the sinks and the countertop is trimmed down to the size that I want. Now I'm gonna take my router with a straight tapering edge bit on this and I'll go around the openings for both sinks and this will give me a nice straight edge that's tapering down towards the sinks. And then I'm actually gonna run it around the outside edge of this countertop. Now you don't wanna run it across the back or up against the edges that will be on the walls or in the corners. You just wanna do what's facing out from the cabinet. So I only have two edges I'm gonna use with the router. And because of where the vanity is gonna be, this corner can be annoying. I might run into it, it'll hit my side walking into the bathroom. So I cut that off at a 45 degree angle and I also ran the router over that as well. Now once the routing edges are done, they're already pretty smooth, so I'm just gonna come back with a orbital sander with some fine sandpaper and sand that down just a little bit more, make sure there's no splinters anywhere. Now I'm ready to add the finish on top of the wood. I've already sanded it down and blew off any dust that's left over. And I'm gonna put about four coats of polyacrylic over top of this. If there's any knots or holes in the wood, you wanna make sure you fill those so that there's not any leaks in your countertop that could leak down into your cabinet. Now, once I have put on the four coats on the top, I'm actually gonna flip this over and put a coat down on the underside of the cabinet. This is really important with solid wood countertops like this because moisture will soak into any exposed wood over time and cause the wood to warp. So if you don't cover the bottom edge of that countertop, it could cause it to warp and bow upwards. And that really won't look right and you may have to replace it if you skip that step. 
Now I'm going to take a molding and frame in the back wall as well as the corner of this countertop. This seals it in and finishes it off. I'm actually going to paint this the same color as the wall so it'll blend right in. Now I'm also going to be using some paper tape to get a clean line along this molding so I don't get any paint on the new countertop I made. Now I'm sure people are going to say, you know, you should just paint the moldings before putting them up. I actually want to put the moldings up first, that way you don't have to come back with caulking and fill in any cracks. The paint will do that, it will seal the wood in up against the wall and I won't have to caulk any of these cracks. Now here's the finished countertop. It looks beautiful and only costs about $20. So if you're looking to save some money and make a beautiful countertop, this is a great way to do it. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. My next video will be on installing the fixtures and the sinks there. If you're interested in that, stay tuned for that video and check it out. Now don't forget to hit that like button down below, comment and subscribe on this video if you liked it. Thanks guys, I will see you in the next one.